Hi, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah, and we're here today to share another travel video. This uh, week's theme is on our anniversary trip um, that we just took down to Westport, Massachusetts. Yeah, we just rolled into the door, a bit tired from the road, but mm -hmm. we really wanted to recap this while it was still fresh on our memories. So our anniversary was on Friday, and it was our 16th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thanks. And it started off actually on Thursday with a uh, anniversary present from my mother-in-law, Nancy, who took us to the Chandler Center for the Performing Arts to see Hot Tuna, Yorma and Jack, some of our favorites. All three of us uh, at some points in our lives have really enjoyed their music, and we had a wonderful time. Yeah, it's a great venue. I've only seen, I think, one other concert there, um, and I think the thing that we were the most surprised about this booking season was that they finally got some really classic acts to come through. It's been a lot of esoteric kind of programming before, nothing that really appealed to us. But um, yeah, it was a real treat to see uh, Hot Tuna, as Rick said, and the acoustics are great. It's a wonderful little venue. So it's it's in Randolph, Vermont, and if you're ever planning a trip up here, I would say definitely check out what's on their program um, and see what they have in store. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really great time, as Sarah said. Great acoustics, great energy, really intimate place to have just the two of them do an acoustic show, and we were really, really uh, grateful to Nancy to have that wonderful gift. Yeah, that was lovely. We had a nice dinner, a uh, little dinner before then. Um, and then we got kind of, we got home kind of late and that was okay. But then we hit the road early Friday morning. Um, it's our usual kind of weekend trip. We go down on the Friday and then um, come back Sunday morning so that we have a bit of a Sunday afternoon to relax at home. Yeah. Um, We're kind of famous as you might find for these 48 hour trips. I like to find things that are about four hours drive from here because that's manageable to not take the entire one day of part of your trip. Mm -hmm. So uh, we looked for something and this happened to be a friend of ours who offered us uh, her place to stay in Westport for the weekend and we're really grateful to her as well. Yeah, we used to go to Montreal, we've been to Portland, um, we've been to Portsmouth, New Hampshire was one of the latest ones. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, it's great to find a place that's, you know, like Rick said, the three to four hour drive from home and and just check it out. So there's not a ton to do in Westport. It's a pretty sleepy kind of retirement community. Um, it is a beachside community and we like going to the beach on the off season because there's just not as many tourists and not as, you know, just not as high prices and it's not a the, I don't know, what am I trying to say? It's just crowded everywhere. Yeah, I'm... crowded. It's easy to get into places. It's easy to get sat at restaurants. It's easy to go see the features that you want to go see um, as long you... as they're not closed. And yeah. you get to meet the locals on their own terms when they're not kind of there for the touristy season. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Westport isn't exactly just a sleepy community. I did notice that there was a passport guide to their summer programs, and they yeah. certainly try to encourage it, but it's not a big beach community. There's not lots of little, uh, lots of places to go. There's a lot of just great family-run restaurants and things to do. Yeah, and small businesses. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, so one of our first stops um, was the yarn shop. Rick is very good about um, planning our trips and uh, picked out a yarn shop. So this was the Sisters of the Wool. Sisters of the Wool. Um, and we got to speak with one of the, we think, owners, Pat, uh, for an extended period. Um, I was looking for something kind of luxurious, a little vacation yarn to pick up. And she didn't have any, you know, cashmere lace weight yarn or anything like that. But she did point me to this stuff, which is beautiful. This is by a company called Earth. And um, this is their unique uh, fingering weight yarn. And it comes variegated. Now, I'm not a huge fan of crazy variegated yarns. But we specifically got this to make uh, a pattern called the Papillon Shawl. And I'll put a picture in here so you can see some examples of that. Um, it takes advantage of these repeats, um, these little splashes of color to make sort of a stained glass effect. And I really like that. And Rick helped me pick out the colorway. Um, so this has almost all of the colors in it. Uh, nice fall palette with some punches of turquoise, pink. And other colors. So thank you for helping me pick out this yarn. You know, I, I don't know if it was just subliminal or not, but I, you were right. It is have a fall palette. We mm -hmm. went down there. We aren't leaf peepers. We live in the beautiful state of Vermont with right outside our window. It's quite gorgeous right now. But yeah. it was nice to take a drive down there and maybe subliminally I was being inspired by those colors as much as Sarah was. But it was a mm -hmm. really nice shop. 
we've entered in, there was a group there celebrating the birthday of one of their knitting group, and they sang happy birthday, we joined along, everybody was welcoming and they friendly. Were, they it offered was, us cake, <laughs> <laughs> they were very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a great little venue, we loved yeah. it. Yeah, and Pat had a lot of um, tips for me, I'm going to Rhinebeck for the first time this year, the New York Sheep and Wool Festival next weekend, and uh, she had a lot of great tips for me as well, um, so that was just, yeah, it was just nice to chat and... And not feel like, I, you know, you were pressed on or, you know, being sold to. Um, everybody in the shop was really nice to Rick, um, <laughs> which is great. You know, I think that there can be a circumstance where you get this husband syndrome and, like, the shop owner doesn't talk to the guy because they make assumptions. And that's always dangerous because it might be the guy who's knitting and the woman who's picking out the yarn. But um, I felt very welcome yeah. by both the uh, the yeah, owner, Pat, nice. as well as the group there. Mm -hmm. And it, but it was funny, you know, speaking of which, in assumptions, Pat made sure when Sarah was showing the sweater that she's still working on for me. And she's like, wait a minute, don't. The curse of the boyfriend sweater, don't do it. And like, no, we're celebrating okay. our 16th anniversary. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that was just a fun visit. Yeah, yep, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we kind of settled into this uh, lovely little home and decided then to just take a walk on the beach. We did. First of two beach walks. That's um, fun. And that's spoiling ourselves, I feel, because uh, as you know, Vermont's landlocked and so we don't have beach here. Um, and Rick and I aren't huge beach people. We're not sunbathers or anything like that, but we do like an, a cold blustery off-season beach and that's exactly what we got right it was right around <laughs> sunset it was beautiful mm -hmm. they uh it's off peak season so the uh there's a town beach and they allow dogs on it so there were so many people walking their dogs in the surf and it was just a wonderful way to spend our mm -hmm. first day there it was beautiful yeah we both just like poking along the shoreline and seeing what kind of interesting rocks we can find and <laughs> things like that. Just, yeah. it, it brings out the little kid in me. I, I love it. I used to collect shells and all that when I was a kid. So, um, yeah, it's just, just a nice walk on the beach. So, and we had dinner. Where did we go for dinner? Um, did we... No, we, had, we were still full, so what we did is we went actually to the Canned Heat uh, Brewery. Oh, that's right. right we yeah. didn't really have dinner dinner, sit-down dinner. We went to this really hip new brewery. Yeah, it just opened last week. While I was planning our trip, I was mm -hmm. trying to look for some places to go. Um, there's a couple of different places. We didn't get to, we didn't go to any other brew pubs there. There's some that are established and this one was brand new and I started following them on Instagram and so I think I should give them a go. Yeah. And did you know that they were kind of a, a IPA sort of a place that that was a specialty? No, so, again, they we just... We do like our IPAs, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just opened last week. I wasn't familiar with their beer. I just saw their kind mm -hmm. of vibe. They have a... Uh, kind of a graffiti tagger big warehouse and yeah. i wasn't looking at what their beers because i wasn't sure how many beers they were actually going to have on tap this early yeah. um but we, yeah we it was hopping on a on a friday night it was yeah hopping. Funny. <laughs> their logo is a giant like hip-hop hop bud with sunglasses i don't know it's, it was it, an inadvertent it, pun i promise <laughs> Well, it's appropriate. Yes. Anyway, it was it was a fun time. I mean, it was kind of a, a I don't know. I, it was sort of like an urban club scene in a way. They had like music cranked, and as Rick said, it's a big industrial space. Um, not a lot of like sit down, cozy spots to sit. It was more of a stand up and mingle and drink your beer. Um, but we met some nice people there. Some other out of towners. Uh, this group of guys that were just at, like out for a boys night out but um but nice guys and yeah. chatted with them for a while yeah i feel like we should just briefly rewind here because one of the things the first thing we stopped at was a great burger place which is oh, dmb right. burgers which is why we weren't hungry as far as our dinner plans were concerned we uh said of course this is someplace again it wasn't nearly on our ra radar so dnb stands for downtown new bedford mm -hmm. and so dmb burger is this great little burger place with local beef really great food and interesting local beers as well so we had a nice yeah. uh, meal there in the afternoon before we went to the sisters of the wool and that was why we weren't even really sure we were hungry but thankfully right. there was some great food at the brewery there was yeah so they have um and i thought this was ingenious and you did too mm -hmm. they have like a little pop-up kitchen so it's a kitchenette inside the brewery space proper but it's not staffed by the brewery people it's staffed by a rotating um selection of different restaurants and so they don't have to have a food truck outside with a different permit 
or where do you park the food truck or is it raining? Do I really want to go outside and eat food? So it's inside, but it's that food truck kind of concept with a really limited menu. And we happened to go on a night where they had kind of Korean hot dogs and hamburgers, um, Korean sliders, pulled pork, uh, pork, pork belly. belly. Yeah. And then also uh, I saw they had like a like a hot dog with kimchi relish and, and things like that on it. So yeah, it was, well, <laughs> it was really good. You were mentioning the parking of the food truck and I'm right. smirking <laughs> because when you par pull into their parking lot, there are giant sailboats in the parking lot up oh, right. on their whatever they... The moorings, yeah. yeah. So, so you have to park kind of between the sailboats and find a place to park. It's a bit kind of surreal experience overall. We should probably talk about the beer, though. The beer was good. Oh, it was we good. We started with a flight. Yep. Um, and we had we had four beers. They were all IPAs. No, that's not true. There was one no. wit beer in oh, there, right. which I a found Belgian. a little yeah. bit... Actually, it was more... It was a Belgian, but it, yeah, it was more of a Trappist because it mm. had that kind of banana kind of ester that I'm Estery not usually thing. a fan of, yeah. but it was quite drinkable. They mm -hmm. had a New England double IPA, and then they had like a sister version of a session version of that same one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then another pale ale, uh, all with very New England, very Boston, Massachusetts name. It's a, you know, it's the Suppa is the one beer, and right. it's a Pula wicked Yui. good beer. And Pula Yui. Pula Yui. Yeah, yeah. so all of these names. Uh, again, if you follow <laughs> me on Untapped, I checked into someone, made some of the notes. But what was really impressive was how reasonably priced those beers were. Yeah, so and the, I don't know if that's an opening weekend thing, like they're going to raise their prices later, but $5 for a 12-ounce pour of a double IPA, really good deal. The, yeah. the flight we had, I think, was eight yeah. for four generous tasting glasses. Yeah. Full, and I really love their strawberry milkshake IPA. That's what they're really yeah. yeah, and it was really good. I've, I have to say, I'm not a trend follower, but I like the fruit milkshake beers that are coming out. The milkshake beers, for those of you who don't know, are made with lactose, right? So they're like a milk stout, but they're an IPA, so you get that kind of creamy, unctuous, mouth-coating, yeah, yeah, vanilla kind of accent to it. Um, and this was strawberry, and it was not sweet. Yeah. Um, it was just strawberry. Yeah, you had a really, the strawberry fruity nose, mm -hmm. and then a full body with a nice bite to it. It yeah. was, I agree, it was... And you could still taste the hops and all the other beer right. components. It wasn't like drinking a strawberry, you know, syrupy thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it might have been better during the summer mm. months as well, but it was still a very good beer, and we were very pleased. And uh, it was packed, but like I said, but it was not, it didn't feel like a like a millennials or a club for young people. There was a mixture of ages, a mm -hmm. lot of women. It was really great to see uh, mm -hmm. the women in the bar. And um, the music was really was pumping and really loud. <laughs> it but, was, it was, but it was a pleasant experience, I yeah. have to say. You probably have to be in the right mood yeah. to, to do that. Um, but, yeah, I'd go back if I was... My Hello. only complaint was that I needed more seating, especially after three hours in a car and driving, etc. I really yeah. didn't want to stand for a while. And that's... But, the good news is that we were able to sit down, speak to some of these other guys. They let us use their seats. And then we all struck up a conversation and had a really good time. We love getting a chance to meet locals or semi-locals. They weren't from that area, but they certainly had the, the Massachusetts. They were from Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. you can tell And they were telling us about other places in the area to check out. So, yeah, yeah that was really pleasant experience. And then we were so tired, we just sort of went home and collapsed. But, um, yeah. but that was a fun fun time and then Saturday you had picked out breakfast place Rick's favorite meal of the day is breakfast and we like to go out to try different breakfast places this one was called the barn and we were warned by our friends to get there early um, of course they tend to get up a little later than us so yeah. we got there about 8 30 quarter of nine something like that no problem yeah and it is a cozy little refurbished barn mm -hmm. uh, and I'll tell you, some of the best service I've had in any place. Yep, best service, and I would say best food. For one of these places that, you know, I get kind of thrown off by places that are like big portions, and like that's the draw. It's like, well, I don't want a lot of mediocre food. I'd like some really good food, please. Yeah, so, right. But um, they did have big portions, but the food was great. Oh, I had yeah. a Belgian waffle, and I'm picky about my waffles. I like them firm and crispy and not falling apart as I eat it. You know, it has to be still kind of crunchy by the end. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was really good. And you got your pecans on got it. Pecans, yeah. <laughs> and I got to have my eggs Benedict on, and I made a little change. I don't normally do this, I but I had a hash, and because mm. they, they said it was their own corned beef hash, they make it on site, and mm -hmm. it was really good. Good coffee, great service. Yep. And um, yeah, I would totally go back there again. Nice and, spicy chorizo sausage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to ask because I'm used to chorizo 
uh, as in the Spanish pronunciation, there is a very large Portuguese population in this region. Um, there's Portuguese on the radio, there's Portuguese food almost everywhere, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I had what I would have called chorizo or what chorizo or whatever they may pronounce it. It was mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. It was good, yeah. Rick let me have a bite. That was good. And bottomless coffee and good coffee and those big, big diner mugs, you know. So when you're when you stayed up late and you need lots of coffee. Then. Mm. By now we decided it was kind of threatening. It was going to be chucking down rain and we weren't sure what we were going to do. We wanted to do something outside for this trip, uh, but instead decided because it was raining to um, to explore a museum. So there was an art museum mm -hmm. in New Bedford Art oh, Museum. Oh no, first we went to oh, the flea market. The, oh right, we went to the flea market. Oh. The Globe Flea Market. Which, I'm sorry that I didn't take any pictures inside, but it was really dark in there. So it, it, it feels like going into somebody's haunted attic. It smells like that. It looks like that. There's junk everywhere. Most of the stalls are not very well kept up. They're just sort of piled in, and it's kind of dig and grab and see what you can pull out. Um, but, but the people were nice yeah, and very yeah, friendly, and it very was great for characters. sort of an entertaining uh, 45 minutes or so as we strolled around and we, whoa, what yeah. is this? Yeah, I just kept my hands <laughs> in my pocket <laughs> and looked at a little bit of everything. There were some, but there were some very interesting things. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like it was a state of nostalgia as well. I found a, some old item that reminded me of my childhood. I took a picture, texted it to my cousin, had yeah. a good laugh at that. But it's like my grandparents had that kitchen set and, oh yeah I had one of those and ooh, that was like the lunchbox that my friend had at school yeah <laughs> but really <laughs> overall it was, junk. It was a lot of junk although there is a lot of Star Wars stuff so Star Wars collectors go to the Globe flea market in it was on was Globe in, Street in uh, Fall River in Fall River yeah if you want to check it out yeah so we went there <laughs> and then they be, I had a little bit of time still before the museum opened so we had to have some donuts and <laughs> I should do, right? Yeah, as one yeah. does. I mean, I didn't think I was going to be ready to eat after that big breakfast, but um, we just there was a great little bakery that was right next door around the corner from, from the uh, the art museum, mm -hmm. and that was such a friendly place. You run into, you know, everybody just knows each other, and it was, it was a nice place. I had this chocolate ganache donut that was like, chocolate pudding on the inside and so and rich and, and i had the coconut cream version of that which was just i probably went into sugar shock after eating it but it was really good mm -hmm. yeah the owner there is kind of like i don't know sort of like a politician like shaking everybody's hand and kissing everybody's baby as they came in <laughs> it was really sweet but it was nice and and you can tell that they put a lot of effort and thought into you know all their handmade uh, things that they they produce the coffee was good yeah yeah, yeah we had an espresso coffee and yeah. a couple of donuts so that was and... called the baker uh, and we'll link to them in the yeah. show notes yeah some of these places like the barn has no social media presence so you just have to like look it up and go find it on the map yeah right um, exactly but... and then we went to oh we went to this exhibit yes so let's see you can see that so so apparently the uh it was that the library the local library uh, i guess mm -hmm. uh, donated they were they were displaying some of Audubon's prints um, from his edition, his large folio that he's known for, which I'm gonna of course forget the name of. Um, but anyway, this was James Audubon at the New Bedford Art Museum. Um, and that was just one of the images we got to see. Unfortunately, today is the last day for this exhibit, uh, but it yep. was really interesting. It was just very small museum. It's a single floor, essentially room for one exhibit. They had mm -hmm. a little back room, um, but it was it was a very cute little place. Yeah, and I had seen the images of Audubon's um, original paintings online, but I had never seen any of the hand-colored prints in person. Mm -hmm. And they had also, the library and the museum had been doing some fundraising to get some of the prints restored. So you, they were retouched or repaired, um, and they were, they were beautiful. Um, and there was a whole display as well about, you know, global warming, climate change, habitat uh, debilitation, and helping people, uh, helping raise awareness of some of the birds that had been pictured that were extinct now um, and also trying to help preserve bird habitat uh, now and moving forward so yeah. it's good it had a good ecological tie-in yeah. yeah and like I said just it's you know everybody knows the name Audubon or they should and the Audubon Society and their current um, preservation natural habitat preservation efforts so it was a great thing to see this historically renowned uh, work yeah. and see some of the images. Of course, it's I, 
they didn't have all of the images. It's over a hundred prints in that original uh, book. But they did they say that a number a of these hadn't been seen in over 30 years, and right. been, they showed a little bit about the restoration process. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these are all wrinkled and curled up, and they did a lot of uh, uh, really great restoration. Work you know. on the paper, yeah. yeah. And some, like I said, some species that are now extinct that were available in his time, and, and so birds that had been in the area, like certain species of ducks and doves. The great auk, which sort of looks like a dodo. Yeah. Um, I think it was a flightless bird. Right. That I hadn't heard of before, yeah. so yeah, that yeah. was that was very informative and a, a very sweet lady in the uh, in the museum store um, who uh, is also a knitter. So um, it's always fun to run into knitters. Got in it. The wild. <laughs> yeah, we I, I, we just seem to whenever we go to museums, they are just uh, we must reflect this. Talk, talk to us about you, what you what your passion is, because it seems whenever we in a museum, it's the uh, the curator or the docent or somebody is going to mm -hmm. always going to be doing something. They'll yeah. Kinda, yeah, they'll kind of come right up to us and, and say, "Hey, can I tell you about this?" Yeah. So it was yeah. just an interesting experience. And again, you know, going in the off season when we first got there, we were the only ones in there, and so it's that's fun because the shop owner or the curator or the whoever it is that's running the thing that you're. Mm -hmm visiting yeah. will often have more time to talk to you and that's always an enriching experience yeah whether so. it's a yarn shop or a mm -hmm. craft brewery or any of these places if you're there in off season or in an off time you can get a chance to meet people and learn a little bit more about them mm -hmm. about them yeah. yep so then after the museum well we were expecting it to be raining a little bit more and it ended up that it had stopped so we oh, went right. back to the house to kind of regroup and then we decided it was going to be nice so we went mm -hmm. down to the um we went down to another beach Yep, and, took and a this beautiful was walk. Gooseberry Point. Gooseberry it? Neck, uh, or Gooseberry Neck Island. Mm -hmm. um, it's this peninsula island that juts out at the bottom of the uh, the Buzzards Bay uh, in Westport. And it was yeah, it was really beautiful. Yep, um, and there's a long walk, and you can't you can't see the beach as you're walking along this walk. You've got um, kind of heathland, grass dunes on both sides of you, and it's very beautiful. But you keep hearing the ocean and you keep waiting to come around a corner or something and see the waves. And the first thing you see is actually these um, abandoned uh, structures. Um, they look like lookout towers or something like that. Rick thought they might have been defensive uh, relics from a, a previous war. We weren't really sure. We'll have to they look like pillboxes or tall towers uh, yeah. that had little slits in them for possibly looking out. Perhaps they're just for Marines um, or for the, the sailors. Uh, but it mm -hmm. had a feeling of more of a bunker mentality. Right, yeah. yeah. It it definitely looks like something where you'd be taking shelter, possibly mm -hmm. looking out. Anyway, we'll have to go back and research that. If I find anything interesting, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, but these are all, they're they're out of use. They've got graffiti all over the outside. And they're just, they're kind of a, a, an odd thing to come across when you're expecting a beach walk. But they're interesting. And then we just continued along the shoreline. Again, just sort of picking through rocks and looking at, Things carved in. Uh, there was a couple of very large pieces of driftwood, and obviously other people had been carving and enjoying in them uh, over the years. Um, yeah, well, so, it seems yeah. to be a place where people go to have uh, fires, beachside fires, and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they're doing it illegally or not. Uh, it seems like the parking lot could be blocked off. But what I was amazed at is other, other than those two concrete structures, it was really undisturbed. Mm -hmm. and these beautiful grasslands. We saw all these wild roses. There were mm -hmm. some of them still trying to bloom. Mm -hmm. um, the rose hips everywhere. And I was just... Little a, tiny beach thistles. I yeah. posted one to Instagram. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So sure just yep. wonderful wild walk. And it, it could have spent yeah. hours there, but it was a nice place. Mm -hmm. And we did see a few people, but not as many on the previous, uh, the public beach. Yeah. And so we had a lot of time alone, which is always nice. Yeah. And... Uh, just looking at the, the changing landscape, of course, when you're on the shoreline, you know, you blink and the sun's doing something different and there's a different cloud and the waves. So every vista, every every turn around the shoreline as we were doing the loop um, was a little bit different, had a different feel. And I can totally see how photographers and painters would love or you know, focus on the New England landscape and the seaside landscapes. The, the light was just amazing. It was mm -hmm. amazing, yeah. Yep. So Rick took some really good pictures. If you're not following him, we'll link again to his personal Instagram account. Um, yeah, I'm Rick Scully VT, but yeah, we'll do that. Well. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was nice. Um, we'll drop some of that breakfast, <laughs> and and then of course we went out and ate more food. Um, <laughs> 
we had looked around and I'm allergic to shellfish. So a lot of the restaurants are kind of tourist, touristy and kind of fried clam based. Um, so that wasn't going to work for us, but we found a great tapas bar um, in that was in New Bedford. That was in New Bedford. Yeah, it was right, right in their downtown historic district, which mm. is little cobblestone roads everywhere and little thin alleyways and great little shops and restaurants and museums. Uh, it was That was a lot of fun. I could have spent a little bit more time you know, just wandering around those cobblestone streets. But we mm -hmm. picked a place called Cork Tapas and Wine Bar, I believe it was called. Yep, yep. And, uh, and the food was great. Um, we didn't have very much wine. We're not huge wine drinkers. I had sangria, uh, just because I wanted something a little bit lighter. And you actually ended up with a beer. I ended up with a beer. I decided I was going mm -hmm. to have wine because I looked at the, at the the menu online, and it was all wines and cocktails and sangrias and things, and that was great. And then I looked when we got there, and like, okay, yeah, this is great. Okay, maybe I'll have a flight of wine. And then I looked over, and I saw a guy had a dark beer. And so I asked our waitress, uh, Gina, I'm like, okay, where's the secret beer menu that I'm apparently missing? She said, well, that menu is actually, let me tell you about our beers. Mm -hmm. And they had some local uh, beers, and I had a nice IPA that went very well with the, the, the meals, the small meals we selected. Yep, yep. And they have... Um... A great range of food, pretty affordable. Um, I think the prices might look a little bit more expensive than your typical tapas bar, but you get a bigger portion. So yeah. just keep that in mind if you do go there. Order less, and you'll still be very satisfied. We yeah. had, And they had a mix of kind of American comfort food fusion things and yeah. then more traditional tapas and as well as some Asian-inspired things. So we got dumplings, we got some sliders. We got a taco, um, we got, ooh, the yeah. street corn, which was the excellent. street corn was amazing, yep. Yeah. Kind of a mess to eat, but yeah. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and again, there was a lot of seafood items on the menu, and so we kind of mm -hmm. stayed away from those. They had your lobster dishes. Um, some of these other places that we did avoid, it was kind of amusing. You were, Because they would put little necks and clams on pretty much anything. It's like, oh, well, they have a chicken dish with little necks and we have, we have this with clams and yeah right yeah with shrimp on it and it's like yeah, yeah. you know i don't know and I, I don't like to be too fussy in a restaurant and ask for a lot of changes and so it's best to just pick something that you can eat and enjoy but yeah the food there was was great my sangria was excellent it wasn't too sweet um and so we can recommend recommend that place and then we were tired so uh we just made our way home and again had a nice quiet evening um there and then got up this morning and kind of wanted to get back and be able to enjoy our afternoon at home so yeah. um, we stopped quickly for some pastries mm -hmm. at a little cafe yeah um, gray's uh what was it called gray's daily grind i know that because i have coffee that we bought there yeah. um that place was a little weird i have to say i was a little critical of their their self-service mentality because some of the stuff isn't very easy to do yourself so like toasting your own pastries in the toaster when you don't have an oven mitt or a safe way to get the thing out of the I don't know. The staff were really nice and ended up helping us, but well, it's, it's a to-go place. It, it is. is. It's a cultural thing. There's only two tables. Most of the, they keep a Rolodex for your your frequent coffee buyers, and it's you they you, it's a small little place, and you get the impression that it's come and go, come and go, and mm -hmm. so they were kind of a little like, oh, right. Nobody's ever asked me for an oven mitt when using the the toaster <laughs> oven. Like, Probably nobody's used the toaster <laughs> oven. They just get a cold pie and, right. and their coffee and leave. But, yeah, yeah, but we had some savory pastries and mm -hmm. the sweet pastries and the coffee was excellent. Yeah. Um, I have to admit, I was kind of biting through my lower lip because I really kind of wanted another big breakfast since we were going to go on the road. Um, but, oh, no, no, but I'm, I'm glad we didn't because just those two things, I was sated, I was full, um, yeah. you know, and we... You can't smell it, but there's some barbecue we picked up locally that we're going to have for lunch as soon as we finish this video. So <laughs> Make it up to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thanks, Sarah. I appreciate yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Now, did you want to talk about your, your I gift? I do. Oh, I was oh, going to say your I, gift. My gift. Yeah, you yes. put it way out of reach over I there. Did. So I was terrible. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so, uh, so just to wrap up quickly, this is the gift that uh, Rick got me for our anniversary present. And um, he usually buys me a small piece of jewelry. That's my kind of preferred uh, memento thing. This is a stitch marker from Magpie Fibers. If you don't know her, um, she has beautiful luxury yarns and um, great gifts for knitters. If you're ever not sure what to buy, if you have a knitter in your life um, or maybe somebody else in your fiber group and you, you're like, well, I don't want to buy yarn. That's kind of personal. 
Um, she's got all kinds of interesting jewelry and other things. So um, this is just a little stitch marker. Again, nothing fancy, a lot of brass. Um, I think some of these are sterling silver. Uh, a leather cord, um, and it's a bracelet. Um, but it's also stitch markers and one progress keeper. So I love it. It's it's my style of jewelry, um, kind of funky and, I don't know, natural looking, I guess. Yeah. Call it. Yeah. So thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. I really love it. <laughs> um, so that was fun. And then the other thing I have to share, of course, is just progress on Rick's hop sweater. I, keep, I posted a few pictures in the um, places you can knit uh, hashtag on Instagram. But I am very pleased to report that I am past the color work on Rick's Pops sweater. This is Humulus. I can almost smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the yarn is by Jill Draper. And I'm hoping to have it done. I was kind of almost hoping that I could wear it to Rhinebeck, but I don't think that's going to happen. But it's definitely going to be done in time for our gift giving season. So. Yeah. yeah speaking of Rhinebeck, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see some of our uh, supporters. Yeah. While you're there next weekend. Yep. I hope to see you. Um, flag me down if you recognize me <laughs> and you want to chat. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I'm also hoping to meet some of my kind of uh, knitting inspiration people, um, including some other designers that I really look up to. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I will have some kind of Rhinebeck video for you uh, next week when I get back. So yeah, looking forward to that. If you have any tips for first-time Rhinebeck person, I sort of have a plan, and I know it's going to be really crowded and crazy on Saturday. Um, but if you have any, you know, tips or or don't miss things, uh, feel free to leave a comment for us in this video, and I'll get it. So yeah, and if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do so, so you mm -hmm. can get alerts when uh, new videos come out. Mm -hmm. um, as Rick alluded to earlier, he does like to make maps for these trips that we go on, so um, we will post a link to his. Mm -hmm. Uh, Westport and surrounds uh, map in case you happen to be down in that area. Um, I have to say it's not necessarily a place I would have picked out, um, just cold, but because we had this opportunity to stay um, for, with a friend uh, from a friend's house, um, that was really nice. And yeah, I had a great time. I did too. That was fun. Yeah. Cool. Thanks again for joining us and tune in next week for more Fiberlicious travel videos. We'll have more for you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Take care. Bye.